Tigers fans in attendance ready to witness some history. Turnbull works the count 0-2. There it is. Strikes out Hanniger swinging on the high fastball to complete the no-hitter. Spencer Turnbull throws the fifth no-hitter of the season as the Tigers win 5-0 behind the, behind the outstanding performance from Turnbull. It's the fifth no-hitter of this season. Second time the Mariners have been no-hit this season. Second time this month as well. Mariners hitting 199 as a team, but this is not about them. Spencer Turnbull throws the eighth no-hitter in franchise history for the Tigers first since Justin Verlander on May 7th, 2011. Let's hear from the man of the hour post-game. Just trying to keep my body loose and just stay locked in. There's been a lot of times um, in games previous where I'd, you know, lose mental focus in between innings sometimes, especially if things are going really well. Um, I kind of, I've had a tendency to kind of let off the gas with my mentality sometimes. And lately I've just been really trying to stay as locked in as possible without shifting out of that mindset at all. Um, I'm not perfect with it at, by any stretch, but I do feel like I've made some huge strides there over the last year. Um, and yeah, just mostly just trying to stay locked in, trying to stay um, present with the game, but just trying to feel my body the whole time, keep it loose. Um, if I feel like I need to keep anything warm or stretch anything out or, you know, roll anything out or whatever it is, I just try to just stay present and feel my body and um, be ready to go out there the next inning. I mean, frame that one for the home office. Spencer Turnbull gets the shaving cream shower post game after throwing the no-no. We're on to five no-hitters this season across the bigs. Most in the modern era in a single season is seven. We are well on our way. Uh, some history was made here. Eighth no-hitter in franchise history, as was said. It's also tied for the most no-hitters through May 18th. Any season, 1917, going back deep into the live ball era. The batting average is down. The no-hitters are up. It's a pitcher's world. And we're just living. Hey, Spencer, congratulations, man. Thank you. Um, can you just kind of, I mean, where was your emotions at? I mean, as it, as it was building and then, you know, getting into the ninth inning and, and walking the leadoff, man, just kind of take us through the whole, I mean, <laughs> what you, what you could have possibly been thinking. I mean, for the most part, I was just trying to stay focused and not let the moment get too big. Um, said I was definitely aware of it. We're on the fifth inning. I was like, all right, let's just keep it going. Hopefully they keep hitting them at people. And I said, I wasn't going to try to do anything different. I was just keep doing what I'm doing, keep making pitches. And um, I was able to keep my head there pretty much the whole time. Um, going into the ninth, though, was a little different. I think that's it was a, li a little different feel. Um, but once I got to that point, I was like, all right, I'm going to be nervous. This is crazy. But I'm going to go out there and keep doing the same thing. And I'm going to keep – I'm just not – I just the – whole, the whole night, I was like, I am not going to be afraid to make any pitches. I'm not going to second guess or doubt or have any fear about anything. I'm just going to go attack and stay in that mindset. If they hit one, they hit one. But I just wanted to stay aggressive and just keep – I didn't want to beat myself. I wanted them to be. And fortunately, they kept hitting them out people. And I made some really good pitches. I made some pitches I probably got away with a few times. But, you know, that's, that's all part of it. That last, that last inning in the ninth, I already knew that I had to walk. So it wasn't going to mess up the no-hitter if I had to walk somebody or if I accidentally walked somebody. Um, I happened to walk the leadoff guy. I was like, no, but I was like, all right, let's just get a double play. And I um, was able to get a couple. I struck that first guy out after the after the walk. And then yeah. ground ball, thought I had a double play there almost. And then, but then I had to face uh, Hanger again and Henninger again. And then that at bat was, of course, like he, he hit me hard twice already in the night. And I was like, all right, see if you can do it a third time. And I just made three of probably, probably three of the best pitches I made all night to him. And, Said, getting to celebrate afterwards. Yeah, that, that that was a that was a heck of a celebration too. They got you pretty good. Jake got you right with the face, and then the beer a lot shower. Of shaving cream and the beer shower and baby powder and who knows what else. How cool was it for you to have, be able to share that with with your girlfriend down there? And even though she had to kind of be in the media media glare there for a quick second, but pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that was, that was really special. I'm I'm really really thankful that she was here. It's absolutely. Yeah. Just, just a dream come true moments. One of the probably the best day of my life. Outstanding. Congrats, man. Thank you. It's Chris. Uh, next to Cody Staven Hagen from the Athletic. And sir, how's this compared to the, uh, the outing against South Carolina you had in college when it got rained out after seven? I mean, it eerily felt very similar. It was kind of just one. It was just like I made some really good pitches. 
warming up. I had some of the worst stuff I've ever had in the bullpen, which didn't feel good at all. But I was just like, I've had that happen before and still had some pretty good games. Um, nothing like this, obviously. But I was like, all right, I'm just going to lock in mentally, just attack, and hopefully I kind of figure my mechanics back out and kind of click back in. And I was able to after the first, um, and I made a lot better pitches after that. Um, I really had no idea um, what exactly it was, just wanted to stay aggressive. But so many parts of it was just like, even the bad pitches I made got hit right at people. And it's just like, all right, this is, I think this is just going to be my night. So that's kind of how I felt that night against South Carolina. But obviously, I wasn't able to finish that one. And this was eerily similar in feeling. But to have to get through the eighth and the ninth was obviously not something I've never done before. So that was a whole nother, whole nother challenge. Talking about that game against South Carolina, you once said that was kind of the moment where you thought, okay, I know I can do this, or maybe I'm meant to do this. Um, just how far have you come since then to now arrive as, as a major league pitcher and a guy who has some confidence in himself? Uh, yeah, I mean, that definitely was the moment. That was my freshman year. Up until that moment, I knew that I had potential to be good, but I like, didn't really know how good or didn't really know how I compare to other people or what the next level might be like, whatever. But that was kind of the moment I was like, all right, I can really do this. I feel like I'm meant to do this. And, um, and then fast forward to today and tonight, I've come so, such a long way and I'm, I'm nowhere near being done. Um, I don't know if I've arrived or not. Um, I, definitely, I definitely feel like I belong here for sure. Um, but it is just an absolute surreal moment. And there's just been a lot of challenges and, hurdles and things I've had to overcome to get here and I had to have a lot of patience with a lot of things but I said I wouldn't change any step of the journey at all um, and hopefully I get to continue to do this for a long time. Yeah, I was going to say that you know whether it's overcoming doubts or little injuries or even stuff off the field that does do those adversities make this even more sweeter? 100%. I said I, th I think without all that stuff it's just you don't get to know yourself as well and so now I get to I know who I am so much more now and then getting to do this with so much deeper understanding of who I am. It's just, there's just so much more meaning to it. I don't really know how to ex explain it. Um, but I'm definitely more me now than I've ever been. Uh, the best, the best version I've ever been up to this point. Like I said, hopefully I get to keep growing, keep maturing as a person, but i um, definitely really proud of the progress I've made and the journey that I've uh, continued and never quit anytime anything came up. And um, I said, hopefully I get to continue and just, just one of the wildest nights in my life. My life. It's just so, it's so special. Thanks, Spencer. Congrats. Appreciate it. All right, next we go to Jason Beck from MLB.com. Hey, Spencer. When uh, Hanniger hits that ball in the seventh, what was your uh, first reaction? Did you think that was going to go down the line, or did you not even have time to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that ball was hit so hard, I didn't have time to think. It was, it was hit, and it was already in Candy's glove, that one hopper. I was like, I said, I, that was kind of one of those moments. Because I remember even um, my freshman year at South Carolina, I remember, uh, uh, was it Christian? Maybe Christian Walker. Um, I can't, but he had a couple really hot smoke ground balls or line drives right at third base. And it was kind of just one of those. And it was just like hit right at him. Kenny made a heck of a play. Just That was the kind of moment I was like, all right, I think this is my night. I'm just going to keep going and hopefully I can finish it. You talked about facing Henniger that next time in the ninth. Was there a little bit of an energy bump there? Because, I, you know, your your fastball looked like it was winning a little bit and then it picked up. You got to 95 on that final pitch. Did you kind of feel like one of those Scherzer moments where, you know, your final pitches were you know, were kind of your hardest? Oh, for sure. There's definitely that. It, there's always a little bit extra that I can reach back for. But on a night like tonight, don't really know exactly what I have and just trying to continue to make pitches, stay within yourself. But that last that last at bat was not only did I want to make my nastiest pitches, but I wanted to execute them as, as perfectly as possible. Um, and I was able to. Like I said, that first sinker down and in was a good pitch to get ahead in the strike. And I threw one of my better sliders all night. And then that, that last four seamer kind of up and away, kind of cut a little bit, it was exactly what I wanted to do with it. I just threw it as hard as I could. Whatever I had left, was emptying the tank on that one. <laughs> I can only imagine the frustration when your season got delayed you know, with, with the COVID near the end of spring training, right, as you felt like you were getting ready. To, how, how sweet is this to come back, you know, basically within a month after you, you know, you get back up and, and to be able to not only do this, but, but to go the distance in, in a pretty physically taxing game. Yeah, I mean, 
know, it's it's just such a sweet moment. Um, like I said, I wouldn't change anything. Going through COVID, all that other stuff. I mean, it kind of sucked at the time, but it kind of is what it is. I'm I'm all right now, and like I said I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it. I know a hitter for having COVID. I mean, that, that's an easy trade for me to make for sure. Thanks, Spencer. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, next we have Brad Galley from Channel Seven. Spencer, you said on the broadcast uh, some of the guys were telling you after the first inning that you were going to throw a no-hitter. Who there was, was that? There was just a, a group of guys, fans, right behind the dugout. And like I said, I, I got through the first inning, and they were like, oh, are you the guy pitching tonight? I was like, I was like, yeah. Like, are you throwing a no-hitter? It was like the first inning. I had, it was like I'd already got through. I was like, I was like, all right, man. And then got there and actually finished. It was, it was pretty cool. And I, I, was like, I was like, you guys called it. <laughs> it was funny. Your, your last outing um... – I mean, even like Jack was saying on the broadcast tonight, which is pretty obvious, he goes, Spencer looks serious, which is clear. I mean, this is your job. This is what you do. But could you feel, not necessarily a no-hitter building, but could you feel performances like this starting to build up, especially like Jason was asking you, now that you were getting your body right? Yeah, I think I think um, just kind of getting through the whole COVID thing, kind of getting through the the little, you know, inconsistencies or whatever that you normally get through in spring training, kind of had to work through that pretty quickly. Only had a few weeks to kind of come back and then first start felt good and kind of scuffled a little bit, but um, we had the off day last week. I was able to work on some stuff. My dad actually drove up and we were to play catch on the off day and worked on a couple of things. It definitely helped um, for the next outing. He said, I didn't, didn't feel nearly as uh, connected mechanically warming up today, but just made sure to, like I said, if I didn't have my best stuff physically, I was going to make sure I had my best stuff mentally because I knew I needed I knew I knew I needed it, and um, fortunately, my stuff kind of clicked in too after that. Kind of right, right, right around the end of the first, after the first and the second, I just was able to just kind of stay locked in after that. Is your dad totally going to take credit for this no hitter after coming? I up? hope he does. He should, but <laughs> no, nah, he, he wouldn't do that. He, he'll give all the all the credit to me, but he definitely he definitely helped me last week for sure. Congrats, man! Congrats on getting both belts. <laughs> Thank you. I right, next we go to Evan Petzold from the Free Press. Hey, Spencer, congratulations. Um, you know, earlier you mentioned, you know, beating yourself at times. Maybe that's, you know, part of the mental game of all of this. I mean, how difficult has that been for you at, at times? Um, it's definitely been a challenge. Uh, I think I think you can be your own worst enemy sometimes. Um, I don't want to be too negative towards myself because I think that's all part of the, the growing process too, learning how to master the mental game and um, stay consistent with that. But that was definitely one of my bigger hurdles. It wasn't, it wasn't as much the stuff. I always kind of had the stuff. It was more the consistency. And I said, a lot of that's consistency with my body and my mechanics and stuff like that. So some of that's definitely a physical thing, but then there's a whole other side of the mental game, um, keeping your mind right, keeping your mindsets right, knowing that even if you don't have your best stuff, you can still attack and still get the job done. Things like that would have um, maybe rattled me earlier in my career a few years ago or whatever in the minors, uh, first in the big leagues. But um, I think I've matured some now to where like, okay, even if I don't have my best stuff, even if I have my C, my C stuff, I can still get outs, you know, and just um, not letting that affect me too much. Like, obviously, I'd rather have my A-plus stuff or my A-minus stuff or my A stuff every day. Um, don't want to have a B, B-plus, B-minus, or even a C stuff day, but it's just going to happen. So it's kind of just whatever you got that day, just like, okay, that's what I have. I'm going to work with it. And a lot of times it ends up showing up later in the game anyway. It kind of clicks back in mechanically. You kind of get that, that mind-body connection. Um, kind of locks back in after after kind of figuring it out. And so I just got to stick with it. And with that being said, too, I mean, we've seen you, you know, develop and, and grow in that way. You know, it was 17 losses, you know, a few years ago. And then a huge step forward last year. I mean, what do you think that this does for, for your career and, and your confidence? I definitely don't think it's going to hurt it. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Evan. Next, we'll go to Bob Wojnowski. Congratulations uh, there, Spencer. And, and I was uh, curious what you had said earlier. You feel like you're kind of the best version of you now, and you can be you, and you've overcome adversity and challenges. What is the biggest challenge that you've overcome? Is it is it the mental game that you play with yourself? Or you get angry at yourself? I don't want to answer for you, but what has been the biggest thing that you're talking about there? Um, I mean, there's... I don't know if there's one thing that's the biggest, but I think definitely the mental side, like being able to be confident, uh, trusting myself, trusting, not not worrying about results as much, things like that. Um, getting past any fears of failure or any anxiousness or anxiety or anything like that. Those have been big hurdles. Uh, 
the physical stuff, like, you know, figuring out my mechanics, figuring out kind of who I am as a pitcher, what my stuff really wants to be like. How do I have that as consistently as possible every week, every five days? Um, all those have been challenges and hurdles to kind of overcome, but I'm not really sure which the most one, but I think all those kind of play in. And then just, you know, just growing as a person, growing spiritually, all that stuff I think plays into it. Just a quick follow-up, when you were going through COVID and everything else and, and missed some spring training, did, did you have any vision that you would be this strong this quickly into this season? Um, it, or has this come out of nowhere for you as well? Uh, I wouldn't say it come out of nowhere, but I don't know what I was going to expect of my body or myself. Like I said, COVID's such a weird thing. I don't really know. It hits everybody differently. Some people obviously have tragic outcomes. Some people end up in the hospital. Some people um, – have barely any symptoms at all and I was you know somewhere in the middle of there and so you just don't really know how it affects your body how it affects how your muscles work or like you said lose a bunch of muscle mass or weight or whatever all that all that stuff plays into it but um I don't know if I expected to be throwing a no hitter in May but um, <laughs> I, f I figured you know give me a month I felt like I could kind of get back to close to normal like I said most of my weight's come back up to this point so I'm feeling pretty good thank you Thanks, Wojo. Uh, last question, we'll go to Dana Gruder from the Free Press. Again, uh, congratulations, Spencer. Um, just from a historical perspective, I mean, this was the first uh, no-hitter in franchise history in the last uh, 10 years, and the last two were thrown by Verlander. I mean, what does this, what, just from a historical perspective, what does this mean to you? I don't really know how to think of it in a historical perspective, but um, just for myself, obviously, it's the greatest achievement in my life so far, um, or at least my baseball career. I don't know if it's the greatest achievement in my life, but um, it is by far the best night of my life, the most exciting. Um, and it's definitely kind of like a one of those just kind of landmark stamps uh, on my career up to this point. And I think for my career moving forward, kind of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to do, but um, I don't really know how to think of it in a historical franchise perspective, but. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here and happy to be a part of that. Happy to have my name written on something that can never be taken away. Very good. Thanks. All right, Spencer, thanks for your time. Congrats, man. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Thanks, guys. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.